So let's jump in and uh, get started. I'm going to first talk about, um, oh no, please. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, can you guys see my screen jumping? So I'll move to the next screen. Okay. Um, so overview, where we're going today. Let, I want to start with um, talking about growth versus marketing dollars. So how much is... Um, Can you hear me? Oh, uh, yes. I'm sorry. Yes. But you couldn't hear me for a little while, right? Um, yeah, that's right. correct. Okay. Everybody hear me? Yes. Sorry, yep. I'm just messing with a few buttons here, trying to make the audio um, not feedback at us. So um, I apologize for the delay there. All right, so we're going to start with talking about growth versus how much it's going to cost you. What kind of marketing dollars do you need to put out? You want to make sure those are in balance to give you the appropriate, um, you're not going to spend too much or, or try and grow more than you have the money to spend. So talk a little bit about that. Then we're going to start really at a high level of um, of where where your business is now and where do you want to go in the next 12 months. Um, I'll talk a little bit about what I call the marketing machine and it's uh, sort of my philosophy that leads um, all of your sales and all of my marketing tips as we go through. And then really the meat and potatoes of, of the um, webinar is all about the campaigns. Which campaigns can you run? How much are they going to cost? What are the easiest to run? And how do you run them? What kind of response do you expect to get from them? And uh, what's your then we'll finalize with a timeline. Let's lay it out into actionable items. And uh, give everybody, you know, really set timelines. I will tell you that this uh, webinar is sort of built for starting in January. It's, it's just the way it was built and how I've been presenting. I haven't adjusted it. Just because it starts in January doesn't mean anything. The sooner you start, the better. And uh, January and February, while it's cold and, and um, there's snow on the ground, often people think, you know, I, I can't sell lawn care during that time. Actually, it's a great time to get your sales machine up and running and things to work out all of um, the different problems. So um, in the in future, feel free to start this campaign or, or start this kind of webinar or this kind of um, plan back in January. So, you know, we'll, we'll adjust it as we go through. If we start by talking about your growth versus marketing dollars. So in order to grow, you're going to have to put some money towards marketing. In this industry, um, you should be aiming for $100 cost per sale. Um, that means that if you want 10 customers, you're going to need to spend $1,000. So it, it really can fall into that. It can go up. Um, obviously, it can go up very easily, but um, you know, somewhere around 100 to 120 is about where you will break even in year one. Um, so that means that you know, if you pay for all your overhead and everything in year in that year, you will break even with that customer. But you will have them for every year after that, and therefore it'll give you a great ROI in future years. So you're looking to aim about a hundred dollar cost per sale. Some of the campaigns I'm going to go over will um, will be much lower than that, and will allow you to to move your average up and down. So you can kind of move that number as you run different campaigns. But overall, in your budgeting, you should be allowing for $100 per sale that you want to get. So that's just a general number to, for the industry to kind of think of. 
Um, I've muted everybody, just uh, there was some feedback. However, if you, um, there's a chat button at the bottom of that screen. If you click that chat button and put any questions, it'll let me know if you have questions or want to talk about anything. Um, feel free to type in there and give me any questions and I'll make sure I answer them as we go through. Okay, so let's talk about the big picture. Let's go really macro. What are, what are the current state of affairs? I want to look at your current business, where you are to date, and what kind of numbers are you watching and measuring. So um, I want you to look at your current revenue and how many customers that relates to. Now, when I'm talking about this, I'm usually talking only about a fertilizing company, so one division. Um, I want you to look at specifically the one division that you're looking to grow. That should be the company that provides you with the most profit margin. Obviously, I'm selling Hoganics, but I've also heard over and over and over again that people say that the fertilizing, um, the, the lawn care, is that the piece where the most profit margins are. So I want you to really focus on the division that provides you the most profit margins. If you walk away from here and say, well, that's my mowing, or that's this, then that can be the one you're going to take all of these techniques, and I want you to use them to go towards that one division of your company. Everything is transferable into that portion of your company. So it's not a, you know, it's not stuck in the fertilizing, but I will refer to it as just the fertilizing. In the fertilizing, there might be many services. So it's the fertilizing, it's the aeration and seed, it's the, um, you might have a perimeter pest or a flea and tick, um, grub control. All of that falls into that one division. So as I look at these numbers, what I'm really trying to figure out is if I gain a new customer, what is the revenue that they're going to give me in year one? Most likely, they're not going to upsell. So if you look at your current uh, revenue per customer and it's over, you know, way high, I'm going to say, okay, let's take a look at that number. If we get new customers, is that how much revenue we're going to get in year one? So that's really my goal is to figure out, as we get new customers, how much revenue are we going to get from that customer? If it's really high and they have more than one program, I'm going to, you know, back it up and try and just figure out how does this going to work in year one for that customer. And then from there, we're going to talk about, you want to look at, okay, where do I want to go from here? What, what goal do I have? What revenue goal do I want to get for 2014? So when we're all done this webinar, everybody will receive um, the spreadsheet that we're going to talk about here. And um, this is a spreadsheet that really just walks you through setting up your plan, how much you want to grow, how much money you're going to need, and it'll take you through all of these steps. So this is the first page of the spreadsheet, okay? And if you look at my numbers on the left-hand side, these are the steps you're going to fill in. Anything that's yellow is, um, you can type in a number, you won't mess anything up, you can change numbers, you can update numbers, however you want to go. You know, you can mess with those yellow ones. The ones that aren't yellow have formulas that will automatically populate. If you want to change my formula, which I have no problem with, nothing's locked, um, you're just going to click on those. But otherwise, you're really just focusing on the yellow and colored uh, blocks because those will be the ones that will give you your most, um, you know, will auto-populate for you. So you, you would just go through, just like in this last, we talked about these numbers, that's exactly what's on these, these spreadsheets, one, two, three, and four. So if we look at, this is just a, a dummy company I have built in here. And uh, so step one, I said, okay, in 2013, this company has $150,000 in revenue in this division. I figured out that they have 425 customers that, that account for that $150,000 in revenue. So it auto-populates and tells me that my average revenue per customer is $353, essentially. Then I say, okay, in 2014, I really want my revenue goal for that division to be $200,000. Okay, so it auto-populates, tells me I need 50000 more. This, this block here is yellow because I could easily pull this down, but you might decide that, that your annual revenue per customer is too high or is inappropriate or you're going for smaller properties this year or you're going for larger properties this year. So I leave your revenue per customer open for you to type in. In this case, I just I essentially brought this down 
you know, with a averaging, uh, I estimated it off there to 350 just to give myself a little bit of wiggle room. It then figures out for me at $50,000 in new revenue needed at $350 revenue per customer, I'm going to need 143 new customers. I would like you to get 75% of those customers in the spring and 25% in the fall. Their revenue will most likely balance because you'll do aeration and seed with the fall as well, but you're looking to get essentially about 75% of your goal in the spring. It's just sort of how the numbers fall. Before I go on, I want to make sure um, we have some Excel basics all talked about that everybody's talking the same language. Um, I had a customer who I sent the the, this um, spreadsheet to and they said, yeah, we kind of got that figured out. There's no problem. I said, you don't want to walk through it more? And they said, no, no, we're, we're all good. And I'm like, really? You, you want, went through all those steps? Let's just see. And we started looking at it here. They had only done the first spot. So I always like to, the first page. So I always like to just make sure we're all on the same, uh, talking the same language. So when we're all done, I'm going to send you the whole workbook. The workbook is essentially the file that I send you. Within that workbook, you'll have worksheets. And so we're going to work through these worksheets. They're listed down here at the bottom. And each one is a step. And as you follow through, that'll, um, that'll walk you through the process. Also, I want to talk about the formula bar versus cells. If you click on any cell, you'll, you'll be good. You know, you can type in whatever. If you uh, want to change a formula, click on that cell, and then go up here to this formula bar and switch the formula. So you'll see me do that as we, as we move forward within this. But those are two things I just like to make sure we're all talking the same vocabulary. So these are the worksheets, the workbook I will send you, and uh, your formula cell versus your, your uh, regular cells. So we already set our goals. We said we want 50000 in new revenue. So now we need to break it down into even smaller, more achievable goals. Okay, I'm just going to put it on a bell curve. Based on the season, we know things are going to start out slow uh, as we get things moving, as we get our systems worked, as we get any um, quirks in our system worked out, our, our kinks that aren't working appropriately. We're going to start a little lower, and then they're going to build as the season goes on. So again, this is built for starting in January. It's no big deal. We're going to still shift down um, into March at this point, and we'll work on that in a second. But again, you're just really breaking it down into more smaller, uh, more doable, more achievable goals so that you're not looking saying, really, I need to get 107 new sales? Where am I going to get 107 new sales? Like, I don't even know where to begin on that. Okay, well now, this month, we just need to get 11, or we just need to get 21. Break it down even further. We're going to follow that bell curve. Now we're just going to break it down into weekly goals. And so again, if you just break it down into smaller pieces that are more attainable, it doesn't seem like such a big thing that you have to accomplish. So, you know, again, this is built in January and February, so you can see in there, in, in week one in January, if your goal was just to get one sale, that's no problem. Or even the last week in February, I have to get six sales. If I spent three hours every day just focusing on getting new sales, could I get six new sales? Absolutely. And that really just gets your systems and your language moving along. So, and that'll build up as time goes on. And, and just because we're starting in, in March, we're still going to use that bell curve and move, move through that. So let's take a step out and let's look at um, the actual spreadsheet. So as I said, we're, we're on the first page here. Here's our pre-work. Okay, in the yellows, we could, we could change this to 200 customers and um, say I've got 450 customers. Oh, something doesn't work there. Got an extra zero missing. Okay, so that gives us a, a $444 uh, revenue per customer. So, you know, you just have to work through those numbers, figure out, does that include grub, a lot of grub? Does that include a lot of um, aeration and seed? How does that work? Another way to really look at that is, is say, okay, so most of my properties are about, um, you know, a quarter of an acre, so that's 10,000 square feet, so I'm going to treat about half of that, so say I'm treating, you know, 5,000 square feet, and um, say I charge $35 for that size property, and I'm going to do six applications, 
So I'm going to do equals 35 times 6, 210. Well, my 444 is way over that. I'm probably going to use more like a $200. $200 revenue per new sale. So, you know, you can really back check your math as you go into that as well. If I set my goal now, say I want to do 300000 this year. So I'm really going to grow. I'm really going to put a lot of money into my marketing. And so, you know, I really want to grow dramatically there. So, again, I can put whatever number in here I, I need. So let's say I bring it down to three hundred. Now it's telling me I need 333 new customers this season. It's a really big jump. I'm going to get 75% in the spring and 25% in the fall. I'm going to unmute everybody for a second. Just make sure um, there's no questions. How's everybody doing? Is this making sense? Yep. Yes. Yep, absolutely. Okay, good. Am I, um, is this helpful? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I'm going to put you all back on mute. If you have questions, feel free to hit the chat button. Okay, so now let's jump over here. This pre-work is all done. It takes this $250 or 250 new customers and it brings it over onto your monthly goals and it automatically puts our um, puts our bell curve in and our goals for each month. And then each month will automatically break down into these weeks from these numbers. So now we're going to say, okay, well, you know, you could go back in January. Maybe you got some sales so you can figure out what percentage that is of your goal. So say you got some, let's change this to a 2%. You got five sales in January. Um, say we got none in February because you just were so focused on snow. I'm going to put zero in my formula, right? So we got no customers. So now I've gotten a... a a 2% here, which means I need to get 88%, right? I'm going to, I always leave May as a buffer month. Um, I never, you know, if I'm starting out in January, I'm going to try and use my bell curve in January, February, March, and April, and leave May as a buffer month. Obviously, snow hits, there's a wet spring, it's cold, it's, who knows, Mother Nature always sends us uh, a, a a problem so we, we got to account for that so I leave May as our buffer month and then in June your sales are gonna die I don't want you to spend any marketing dollars in June to um, get a new customer you might spend some marketing dollars to upsell your current customers in June tree and shrub is great to sell in June um, a flea and tick or a perimeter pest those are great uh, options to sell to current customers in June. But don't spend any money on marketing to prospects because you just won't get your return on investment. So I, I, I never put anything into June. Again, if I take these this now and I say, well, I need to account for the rest of my sales, right? I'm going to open May up and uh, I'm going to say, actually, I just, I'm going to drag this formula down. to copy it down for a minute and uh, so I've got 30 40 percent and 30 percent so 70 percent of my sales are coming in March and April so I've got 30 left essentially to get so I've probably overdone it a little bit because I have my um, two percent up here but I'm gonna leave it that way just to to give me a little room for fluff and again now my my formulas have re Rechanged all my weeks down here to give me appropriate goals. In February, we got none. In January, my five are just laid in, and those automatically populate. March and April then start laying in how many per week. And again, just the same as before, you can start changing it. So, you know, we're in, um, you know, we're in the third week in March now, so you could go back and say, well, I only got, um, you know, whatever percentage, you know, maybe 5% that week and maybe 5% that week. So now I really need to jump into gear. And over here I'm going to say I need to get 50% of my month goal, right? So you, all I'm saying is you can play with this based on where we are in the time of year and um, 
and how to make the numbers more achievable, more attainable. You know, again, you look at those 50 sales this week, 50 sales next week, that's not really attainable. So let's go backwards. Did we set too big of a goal at the beginning? Do we have the money to spend that? So it's just really a way to start working with the numbers and figure out what works best for you and your company, but it also breaks it down into more attainable, uh, doable goals. Let's jump back to our PowerPoint then. So I just, that sounds great. I, I broke it all down. You, you're going to be able to achieve these goals. But um, what exactly am I going to do? How am I going to get these sales? What can I do? And what kind of return on my investment am I going to get? So before I go into that, I like to talk about what I call the marketing machine. And uh, this actually comes from Eric Kalis and uh, Mike Lieberman. They uh, wrote a book called Reality Marketing. I highly recommend it. They have a company here in Philadelphia called Square Two Marketing. And they talk about the marketing machine as um, when a prospect enters your marketing machine. They enter the very first time they hear it, hear your name, they're at A. And when they buy, they're at Z. Right? That's when they buy. They may have to see your name, A, B, C, D, E, F, but they need to see your name until their pain is greatest. So you need to sort of um, trickle in on them and make sure they see your name over and over and over again so that you're the one they think of when their pain is greatest. And they might buy at C and jump to Z. Or they might be at M or N. You just don't know. But you want to make sure that you're the one that they think of when their pain is greatest. So being in front of them and them seeing your name more and more repetitively is important in this marketing machine. But we want to make sure we do it in a way that does not blow up your budget. So we still have to stay within that $100 cost per sale, but we want to make sure people are seeing it more repetitively. So it will force you to be a little more dense and figure out exactly where your most profitable customers are and really stay in front of them more often. So I really like this marketing machine piece and, and it's where I've seen the most success. I often hear people tell me, oh, direct mail doesn't work, or this doesn't work, or that doesn't work. Well, did you do it just one time? Because people are inundated by marketing now and they just see so much. And how to get yours to stand out from the rest is very hard to do particularly on a budget. So um, really thinking about how to stay in front of them in, in a more dense way um, to really not blow up your budget is just as important. The other thing I want to talk about before we go on to campaigns is inbound and outbound. So this whole webinar is really all about outbound marketing. Outbound marketing is what I know. It's what I can um, tell you all about and how it will work. It is considered old school, but I can prove an ROI. I can tell you exactly how much it's going to cost and exactly what you're going to get back from it. Examples of outbound are telemarketing, direct mail, trade shows, TV and radio, door to door, all kinds of different pieces like that. Okay, Inbound. Now, examples of that, search engine optimization, social media, blogging, content generation, videos, email blasts, those are all considered inbound. And they're really important in this day and age because it's proving that you're an expert and you're building trust with people. So I really, really love inbound. And if you watch Holganics and what we do, we do lots of inbound marketing. Um, I have Caitlin who um, is with us today here um, and she sends all her stuff out. She pretty much is has been with me for... Um, three years now and uh, is, is technically an intern as she goes to school, but she does all of my inbound marketing. She's on our website. She's doing my search engine optimization. She does all my posting on social media. She does all my content and blogging. Um, she helps us get our videos done, the email blasts. That's all Caitlin does. Okay, so what I can't tell you is how many sales I've gotten from all of that inbound work. I can't tell you exactly how much it's cost. I mean, I can look at, at probably her salary, and I could look at um, some of the, the web hosting things that we use to, to do them. But it's really, really hard to figure out exactly how much it costs you and how many sales you got from it. So while I really believe in inbounds, I don't focus on that um, in this in this webinar because I can't tell you exactly how many sales and how much money you're going to make. If you can start doing any inbound techniques, if you can pick up any of these pieces, 
um, and, and start doing them on a very small basis, any social media or any blogging, if you can in, uh, institute them into your business in, in a small way, I highly recommend it. And I'm, I have, I'm working on a new webinar all about inbound marketing. But um, in this one, I really just want to make sure I can give you a return on your investment and tell you exactly what, how many sales you're going to walk away with and how much it's going to cost you. Going to uh, take a minute here and unmute everybody. Any questions? Do those two things make sense? The marketing machine and inbound. Any questions on that before I move on? Nope. Nope. Makes sense. No questions. Okay. Is anybody using inbound? Start a Facebook page. Awesome. Got me three customers in a few weeks, so. So, cool. yeah, and you're counting, that's great. With only uh, 79 likes, so not, not you know. Not I think that's the hardest part is getting your likes, so you're, you're well on your way. Yeah, well, a friend of mine told me that um, Facebook has an algorithm that only 18% of your actual Facebook friends see your posts. So even though I sent out invitations to like 600 friends, I only had 69 likes so far. So I've been doing other things to try to expose them to liking it organically as opposed to sending them an invitation. Yeah. I just did some of the uh, Facebook marketing last week. Um, and we, we're, we're at around 800 on our page, a little over, but we gained 150 in a week. Wow. So, and I spent $90 on Facebook marketing. And how did, what did they do? What did you do? Uh, I just posted some pictures of our work um, and made a few comments about each of them. And then you could go to the boost post things they have. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it cost like 30, the minimum one was five bucks a day. Um, okay. And I uh, did that on two different pictures I posted for six days, so 30 bucks on each of those. And then I did a uh, Facebook ad, I don't know, they had a promotion or something over there where it was 30 bucks where they would guarantee it went out to between 1,500 and like 5,000 people awesome. um, that are all either connected to your friends or within a geographic area. And um, we went from like 660 to 815 now in like eight days. That's great. Yeah, that's awesome. I have to tell you, I, I ask that and I go through this often and uh, most people are silent. So I commend you guys for really being ahead of this curve and really um, designating time to it and having success and numbers around it is awesome. All right, so let's move on. Let's talk about some outbound then. Um, okay. Low-hanging fruit. The people who already know you, already have done business with you, already recognize your name, um, have already reached out to you, are twice as likely to buy from you. So they're what we consider your lowest hanging fruit. Um, people who have cancels, people who have other services, people who have um, requested an estimate from you in the past but didn't buy, those are your lowest hanging fruit and are twice as likely to buy from you. So these campaigns are, are by far your easiest to run and your cheapest to run and you'll get your best response from them. So I highly recommend these three campaigns if you do nothing else, if you can run any of these campaigns, these would be the ones I would do. The first one, if, and if we walk through this, if you look at the top, um, the top box is an empty one. It'll, it's what your spreadsheet will look like when we go into it. And of course, the yellow is where you want to type. Everything else will auto-populate for you if you'd like. The bottom one is an example set in. So if we look here at cancel customers, if I'm going to run a campaign of cancel customers, and I have 200 that I can pull from the last 18 months, two years, somewhere along those lines, you, if you have 200 customers you could pull from, you would get a 10% close rate. So that's 20 customers, okay, that would, that would close on this campaign. If you have a, a revenue per sale, this is built in still at that 350, a revenue per new, new customer. Your campaign is going to give that, this campaign will give you $7,000 in new revenue. 
how am I going to do that? That's great. What's this campaign going to be? All I want you to do is send them a letter. If you're in the real green system, a prepay letter is an awesome one to run. If you're not, it's no big deal. Run, you can do a mail merge or you can do a letter in Word. And I want you to send them a letter just saying, we're really sorry we lost you. We've got a new initiative this year. This is what we're really excited about. New customer service, uh, more experienced technicians, a great new bio-nutritional product we're using that allows us to greatly decrease our synthetic products and, uh, and help the environment. Um, any of those things, whatever you're excited about to get them back on board. Give them an offer, a free application, 10% off if they prepay, a free lime, a free soil enhancement, any of these things. Okay? Give them some offers. Give them a reason to come back. It's going to cost you a dollar for the envelopes and the paper and the toner and all of that. It's going to cost you 46 cents for the postage. There's some labor not included in here, so I'm a little low on my cost. But essentially, it's going to cost you about $300. You're going to get 20 new customers and $7,000 in new revenue. It's a great return on your investment. Notice that I have the call center boxes empty. If you go back and call these 200 people, you will double your close rate. You will get 20% on this. So you'll get 40 new customers. You're going to get $14,000 in new revenue. You will add additional costs, obviously, because that's why there's a box here. You're going to really need some labor to sit down and call and you will have tremendous results on this campaign. However, calling is like the arch enemy. Unless you love it and really live for it, then it's really, really hard to do. It's hard to be, you can't assign one person to sit down and call this campaign. You're going to hear a lot of no's over and over again. You've got to really create some um, camaraderie around it and really put some time towards it. Your best times to call are from, um, three to or four to eight at night so those are your times where you really want to do it but really who wants to sit down and call at that time of day it's a really hard time of day nine to one on Saturdays who wants to give up their Saturday morning but if you're gonna call you might as well call at the right time and make it worth your while so I strongly suggest that you um, if you're gonna call Put a competition out there, $100 to the first sale in that campaign, or do something to, to really get excitement. Get pizza for everybody and sit around a table, and who can get the most um, sales on this campaign. You'll really dramatically change your results. However, I never include it because it's a really hard thing to do. So um, I, I leave that blank in there. But again, going down the same thing with the open estimates, and other services, you're going to do exactly the same thing. You can almost use that same letter. Once you get that letter written and the language moving, it'll be really easy. Open estimates. I'm um, sorry you didn't choose us last year, but we'd really love to have you back or have you look at our company again. We, we're really excited this year about blah, blah, blah. Join our team this year or, and, uh, and receive a free application or 10% off if you prepay, soil enhancement, lime, whatever it is you want to offer. But again, that same type of campaign is going to give you the same results. Other services. Anybody who does any other work with you, if you do design build or you do um, mowing, those are all people who already pay and are already interested in making sure the outside of their property um, looks really nice. They're great, great, low-hanging fruit, and they're going to respond really well. They already trust you. They already know your name, and now you're just giving them an incentive to join you. So these three campaigns are, are, should be your top, top priorities, and they're the ones you're going to get your, boat, your best response on. I'm going to take a minute again and unmute everybody. Has anybody run these campaigns? Is, um, are these things that you've seen success with, not seen success with? What, anything helpful there? We're getting ready to start one. Which one? Uh, maybe sending out letters to current customers that have other services. Awesome. Anybody else? All right, let's jump on to the next campaign then. The next campaign would be our Golden Streets. If you've uh, been 
watching some of our blogs or any of our videos, you'll know that um, as a team, Golden Streets, we believe, is the key to your success of your business. What we have found is that um, in, a, in our prior business, we really grew very, very quickly, and our customers were all over the place. And so, really, it was costing us so much money to get... Um, to get from one property to the next. So much of the cost of our services to our clients, so much of that cost goes to driving the truck, the windshield time to get the truck there, to fill the truck, to put fuel in the truck, to the maintenance and wear and tear on the truck. If you can eliminate that, you've just saved yourself so much money. So again, we go back to that very first slide, how much can you afford to pay for a new customer. You can actually afford to pay double, double the amount for the neighbor of an existing customer. So you can almost afford to spend, I, I think the number is actually something like $265 to get the neighbor of an existing client. Obviously I'm not going to go to that extreme because we're looking for average. Our, our low hanging fruit campaigns really had a great return on your investment on your neighborhoods. It's going to cost a little bit more, but we're not going to blow up our, our formulas. Again, we're looking for that average. But neighborhoods and building density, find your golden streets, find your neighborhoods where you could really improve your profit margins. Okay, If you can cut out windshield time, if you can um, really build density in three neighborhoods, you will dramatically improve your profit margins. So I want you to think outside of the box, and I want you to be able to um, touch the people in these neighborhoods every three weeks in some way. Okay. So I want you to think outside of the box. I want you to think about how you can build relationships with people in these neighborhoods. I want you to really just focus on no more than three to five neighborhoods. Five, I think, is actually too many, but depending on your size, it might you might be able to do that. But if you really zero in and look specifically at these three neighborhoods and start touching them with some piece of marketing every three weeks, the more they see you, the better you're gonna you're gonna have results. I actually was having this this conversation with a group. And uh, one of the guys said, I've, I've been following this and I've been working on it. And uh, what I have found is that the first 20 customers in a neighborhood are really hard to get. After that, I actually don't need to do any marketing. They just fall into place. 20 to 25 customers seems to be the magic number. Once I can get that, people, enough people see my truck, enough people are talking about what I'm doing, that I really don't even need to worry about doing any more marketing in those neighborhoods. So what kinds of things can we do to, um, to be part of bus stop marketing, to really um, infiltrate and, and become part of these neighborhoods? So one of my favorite um, campaigns is to build an invitation. And uh, actually, let me pull up an example. I built an example. And all you have to do is go to uh, Target. Go to the card section, bottom shelf, underneath invitations, there is blank pieces of these, so you can do them right in your, um, right out of your office. You don't need to pay anybody to do this. Put your logo at the top, an example here, Pure Green is excited to offer Eagle View Farms a more sustainable approach to great green grass. Call us today to receive a special pricing of, remember, you can give them a lower price than you would normally give for this size property. Um, it's a neighborhood. They should be generally all about the same size, so you can block price. Um, but you remember, your profit margin in here is going to be so much better when you build your density, so give them a good price. $45 per application. Our organic hybrid program reduces pesticides by 50% while giving you the lawn you love. Visit us at our website or call our office today. Nothing super complicated, very easy, but you're going to put it in, a, in an envelope that has no return address and just a label with their name on it. It's going to get them to open it, right? They're not, they're, it's going to look like they're getting an invitation to a party. So they're going to open it, they're going to see your logo, and they're going to see the price. They might read in between the lines and see what's different about you, but essentially it's giving you, um, giving them a very first look at you and, and you in a different um, pers perspective. 
Um, so that's one of my favorite, favorite things to run um, when you're doing that. I also highly recommend in these neighborhoods Frisbees. Uh, you know, so many people ask me about door-to-door -door marketing. And while I think it has a place and uh, people are having success with it, I found that it was very hard um, to execute and really find accountability and really get the success in it. But what I found is that if, if you throw Frisbees, Frisbees, out. so if you go door to door, you're going to put paper out. Put that on the front door, right? So paper doesn't have much shelf life. It's going to get thrown away. You're going to put it on the front door if they're not home. And uh, what are the chances that they go in the front door? Because, you know, 8 out of 10 people don't go in their front door anymore. They go in the garage and close the door and never see the front door. So how long is it going to sit there and what's the weather going to do to it? So it's taken so much uh, manpower and time and labor costs to actually go door to door. It's paper, it's going to get seen once and probably get thrown out and who knows when it will get seen. So it's got some downfalls there. We actually had a technician say to us one time that they were, you know, couldn't take the time to really hang door, hang, hang door hangers and you're trying to get production done and so he came up with the idea again this is probably about 15 years ago he said just give me some frisbees give me a box of frisbees and after I'm done my property I'm gonna go down the street and I'll throw a frisbee on every property how easy would it be to take uh, you know your kids out or a neighborhood kid put them in your truck and ask them to throw frisbees as you drive down the street on a Saturday morning it's plastic most people aren't gonna throw it out Spring's coming, right? This weather is going to break here. It is breaking here today. It looks really nice. Um, and so people are going to start coming out on their lawns. They're going to, what are they going to do? Throw that Frisbee that's been sitting there all winter or, or they just got on their uh, driveway. And it's going to be seen over and over again. There's your logo on top. We would put a sticker underneath with whatever the offer is. So, you know, get a plain sticker that just says, we'll do your property for, you know, $45 per application or whatever it is. The only words of wisdom on Frisbees that I can tell you is uh, they should be pet safe and shatterproof. People don't get angry that you threw a Frisbee on their property, but they will get angry if it shatters and they have to clean up a mess, and they will get angry if their dog eats it and has to go to the vet. So make sure they're pet safe and shatterproof. Um, put them in your postcard campaign Put um, and, and prepay. Send them a prepay offer. Again, just like in our low-hanging fruit campaign, send them a letter. Here's your... Here's your pricing. Here's what we're excited about. Join our team. It's all about just being in front of them and in different ways. Some really outside of the box ideas in Golden Streets um, is to, to become part of their community in things that they're doing. So uh, one neighborhood that we did, they had a run. They had a 5K run. And so we would sponsor the event. So we would have our logo on their shirts. We would put up a table and we would give water out. We would have guys running in the event. We would have guys help set up the event. So we really became one with that event. We probably had, it was a huge neighborhood, and there were about 500 um, homes in it. I think we had about 350 homes in that neighborhood by the time we were done. So, you know, really getting involved in their community. What are things they're doing? Are they having a spring garage sale? Could you help with uh, heavy furniture? Um, are they doing a spring Easter egg hunt? Could you fill eggs and spread them and put a sign up that says, you know, you sponsored the Easter egg hunt that day? Really getting involved in their neighborhood and, and their community is key in Golden Streets. And again, I'm going to unmute everybody, just see any thoughts on Golden Streets. Anybody have pretty good density in these neighborhoods? In any neighborhoods? Not particularly. I'm, I'm pretty spread out over a three-state region. Oh, that's a big region then. So yeah, trying to build density. Delaware to North building. Jersey, so it's a little bit difficult. Yeah. So building some density would really help you. Yeah, I'm actually got have some um, postcards and some uh, door hangers being printed as we speak that I'm going to target areas where I have some of those homes, like up in Jackson. I have a couple couple of homes in a neighborhood that's, you know, some of them are barter and some of them are cash paying and, you know, they're $800,000 homes and, yeah. you know, they're going to get a combination of both. Awesome. The door hanger that worked well for us, our crews put them on the neighbors when they were working in a area. Good. 
they're not a bad thing at all. I, I you know, I didn't mean to say that either. But you know, frisbees um, are, are an easy way to to blast it if you're looking for time and uh, resources that way, and a, and a way to be outside of the box in the Golden Street. Okay, if we go on to direct mail, I have so many people tell me now that direct mail doesn't doesn't really work, and um, I, I really think that there are two schools of thought in making it effective. One um, is to really personalize your direct mail, so personalize it by having um, a personal URL on it, or having a picture of their home, or um, you know, definitely having their their name and address on it and definitely um, having a price on it is always you know a really good thing on a on a direct mail piece um, but the other school of thought is to make it generic and if you can do it low cost enough and generic enough in a big way and do lots of numbers or you can do less because it's going to cost more to do personalized, but you'll get a better response. It's really a balancing act. You're going to get the same results either way. So doing it generically, repetitively, lots of numbers, it's going to cost less, um, and you'll get a certain that certain result. And if you personalize it and do less of it, it's going to cost you about the same, and you'll get the same results, but you've got a, a much smaller than number that you're going to. I personally tend to stick to the generic side still. Um, the United States Postal Service has created Every Door Direct Mail. You guys seem pretty on top of things, so I'm guessing at least one of you have tried Every Door Direct Mail. But essentially, you can um, print and mail for 25 cents a piece. You have control over it by um, doing your, you get to choose your own routes. You get to take it to the post office and they'll get it out within three days. So you get to watch the weather. You get to make sure you're, it's dropping at the appropriate time. And it's such a low cost, you're able to do large quantities often. So, um, you know, I would be looking for at least three to four mailings of a postcard. If you do one mailing of a postcard, you're probably going to tell me it doesn't work. I want the picture, I want the postcard to look almost identical, um, if not identical, the whole time. And I just want you to drop it over and over and over again. Again, you're just going to go um, through, um, if you go online and you type uh, Every Door Direct Mail, look for the site that is uh, the United States Postal Service site. And then when you click on there, it says use this tool. There are many companies doing it for people now, and they'll charge you a little more, and people say, well, that's great. I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to drop it off. I don't have to do any of the work. But by doing the work of some of it, you really have a little more control on it. They're really going to want to ask you, when do you want it to drop so they can plan? Whereas if you get them printed, get 20,000 of them printed, and you get them bundled, and you pick your routes, you take them to the post office, you get to decide um, when they're going to drop So at the last minute. So I really think it has a benefit there. So again, you know, if I'm, if I'm looking at, um, you know, if I did 5,000 a piece, you've got a very low response rate on this. Um, I think this is like 1%, half a percent, I don't know, we'll look in a second. So, but it has a very low close rate. But over the course of this, it's a great, you know, it's 40 new customers and it's, you know, $15,000 in revenue. So it's really going to help towards your goal. It's, it's not perfect. If you look at your ROI, this would be much higher than your $100 cost per sale. But again, we're trying to balance between your low-hanging fruit and this. So it, it's really a balancing act when you look at the whole piece of, of that return on your investment and trying to get to that average of $100 cost per sale. I want to go back for a second to Golden Streets, too. I didn't talk about... Um, their response. On the spreadsheet, this kind of blows my spreadsheet up a little bit because, you know, I'm really, I'm looking for a 5% close rate. Well, you're going to have to do all of these things to get that. You know, you can't do just one of these things and that, get that kind of response. So uh, I'm looking for you really to get um, a 5% close rate in year one in those neighborhoods. So, um, but it's not with one thing, where everything else on the spreadsheet really is about doing it once. So the campaign spreadsheet, this is what it's going to look like. I'm going to jump out into the spreadsheet again. 
So we've got our monthly goals all worked out. If you jump into your, this is what we were doing in different pieces. This is the winter spring campaigns. And those top three are your low hanging fruit that we talked about, right? We've got uh, a 10% close rate on them without a call. If we were going to call it, go in and make that a 20%, right? And double that. Um, we didn't really talk about measured properties. This would just be properties that um, you might have, a, have bought a list or just have a general list from somewhere you don't really know. Um, you know, you might know the size of their property, so you'll be able to price it, um, but it's really just blind data. Here's your neighborhoods placed in here, and again, you know, if, if you look over here, I have a, a material cost of $5 built in, so I'm really looking to spend some money in those neighborhoods. Um, and, you know, if you look at your ROI, it's not really, we're spending almost $3,000, and we're going to get, you know, $9,000, it's not a real good return on your investment, but you're going to improve your um, profit margins when you go to do production, so you can afford to do that. Here's your postcards built in, and uh, let's see, I have I have a 2% built in, right? Uh, no, I have a 0.2% uh, close rate on those, so I have those really low. Okay. If you look at the bottom line, 195 customers, 68,000, let's see, uh, equals this. Oh. Sorry, I did that backwards. Uh, what am I doing wrong? Oh, I'm using totally wrong numbers. Sorry, guys. If we take and we divide how much we spent divided by how many customers. So $72. That's really low. I'm probably off somewhere in here. Um, who knows where it is. But you want to check that at the bottom. You know, once you get to the bottom, how much it's going to cost you, how many customers you're going to get. Make sure you get, you know, an appropriate number here. Um, I've been usually about 109, so I must have changed something in here. Changed that. Let's. It's creeping up. I'm not sure where I've, um, but it usually comes up about 100 and 110 when I'm done. So if you look over at the direct mail, you know, I have no material cost built in because I have it all built into that 25 cents. The print is there um, and the postage. So um, from here, the best thing to do then is say, okay, what am I going to do and when? So really picking out what dates you're going to do them. So if you jump over here, I'd start laying in campaign. So here we are in this week. So let's start here and we're going to say, uh, say we're going to run our cancel campaign here. And uh, I'm going to mail to them and there's going to be 200. So really assigning dates. So when you come in in the morning and you're getting pulled by a broken down truck or an employee that didn't show up or a customer who's screaming and wants you there, you can prioritize and say, okay, I'm going to go do that customer or I'm going to go help this broken down truck. But when I get back, I know exactly what I'm doing. I don't even have to think about what's supposed to be done. And again, here, you know, looking at your neighborhood. So say I'm going to do the invitation first. So, and there's uh, 500 people in that neighborhood. Um, my first week, I'm not going to do any calling. This is usually calling. Um, so back here, I'm going to go back in that cancel campaign. Next, I'm going to run people who have requested estimates. I'm going to mail to them. I've got 200 of them. I'm going to now, I'm just going, that's neighborhood one. Now I'm going to go to neighborhood two and do my invitation. So I'm just going to put them on a rotating basis so that every three weeks I'm back. If I'm going to call, I'm going to call whatever it is I mailed the week before. So I had mailed my cancels the week before. So I'm going to call them. And I've got 200 calls to make. I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to have people who have my other services. And I'm going to mail them. I've got 200 of those to do. Now I'm in, in neighborhood three doing my invitations. If I could spell it, it would help. Um, 
And now I'm going to go back, and this week I'm going to call my estimates that I had mailed the week before. So it's really just making it so that you don't have to think about it when you come in. How many sales do I have to make this week? What campaigns am I going to run to do those goals? And you can see these goals had um, pulled over from, from those other worksheets. So it tells you exactly how many you're trying to get in that week, so you can align your, um, your campaigns right with that week. So um, it's just a matter of now maybe our postcards are going to hit. Um, I'm going to mail them, and it's going to be 500. Now I'm going back into neighborhood one, and I'm going to throw Frisbees. And back to 500. I'm going to go back and call my other services. Okay, so it's really just about making it so that you don't have to think. If you just do it one time, put the time in to really think about when I'm going to do and what I'm going to do and what my response is going to be, you'll get things moving. And once the machine is up, warmed up and moving, it will run um, sort of on its own and give you lots of sales once you get the machine moving. The hardest part is getting the machine moving. That really concludes... The, the marketing plan um, webinar. Are there questions, things I can answer? No questions? In, in, the past, using, in the past, using your Frisbee marketing, do you have any numbers you could quantify uh, success rate? Um, I don't because it's not something that you'll see um, right off the bat. It's not like they're going to pick it up and call you right away. It's something that will trickle in a little more um, as opposed to, you know, an overwhelming. We threw Frisbees today and we got 10 calls and, and five sales. You know, it's, it trickles in a little more because it's something that has some shelf life and sticks around. And they, when their pain is greatest, that's when they call on them. Uh, I can um. tell you that... Um, you can get Frisbees for somewhere between 38 and 50 cents now. So that's about the price you should be looking for to get them, um, depending on how many you're, you're getting. But um, somebody called me and said, well, they were a dollar a piece. No, you can get this style Frisbee that I'm talking about. And I have a contact. I can send you the contact, tell you exactly who to get them from um, if you need that kind of pricing or looking for that kind of pricing and can't find it. Mm-hmm. Between 38 and 50 cents. Mm-hmm. Hoffman's, how are you guys? Good, and hey, we've already kind of gotten going on some of this, so in that um, real green system next week, girls are doing training on it, so. Good. Um, we're just kind of waiting to get going on that. Good. And was um, it helpful quantifying some of these pieces that we had talked about? Yeah. Good. Anthony, how about you? This is all new to me. I'm a golf, a former golf course superintendent who's taking over a existing lawn care company. Okay, great. We're in the and we're in the process of trying to get the customers organized and see who's active, who's not. But this is going to be a great tool for us to incorporate into our marketing. Yeah. I just went, um, I just did this with somebody else who had just come out of, they were helping their brother and he was in uh, pharmaceutical sales and uh, just came in and started helping his brother with the company and uh, he's like, oh, these are the numbers I've been looking for. So it, it right. will help you walk through some of this. And again, yeah, great. You know, I wish you, I could get a recording of this webinar. <laughs> actually, I recorded it, and uh, Caitlin oh, will be posting it on the website. Yep. Okay, fantastic. That would be great. And when I'm done, as soon as I'm done, I will um, send you, Caitlin will send you the spreadsheet as well as the, the PowerPoint. So you'll get both of those to help you walk through them. Fantastic. And Anthony, we just put two and two together. You're our, you're our root winner, aren't you? Yes, I am, actually. Congratulations. I mean, I, well, thank you very much. And I mean, after using your guys' product, I'm super excited to bring this into the lawn care here. So we really awesome. want to try to incorporate that into our business as much as we can because the results we have were just phenomenal. Good. 
If um, you're not already, tomorrow I'm doing another webinar on messaging that really helps yes. you talk about this product to um, customers. So if um, you, you're on it already, yep, I we'll sure talk am. again tomorrow. <laughs> Sounds great. Michael, hey. sorry, go ahead. Thanks. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Michael, how about you? Are you all good? Should we try and set up a call, a time to call, and talk through some of the things? I know I dropped the ball on you last year, and I want to make sure um, I can help you as much as I possibly can without dropping the ball this year. <laughs> yeah, that would be very welcome. <laughs> so um, are you available right after this? Absolutely. All right, give me about 10 minutes, and then I'll give you a call. No problem. All right. Is that, I think Thank I have you. your cell. I'll give you a call on that. Is that appropriate? That'd be great. Okay. All Good right. Good luck, everybody. It was a pleasure meeting you guys. Yep. Yes. Thank you. Thanks for joining us, Caitlin. I'll send you an email.